Hey everybody, welcome back to Taskmaster is Wonderful. I am Eric and today I am talking about Taskmaster New Zealand Season 4 Episode 1, A Love Bomb. This series stars the Taskmaster Jeremy Wells, his assistant Paul Williams, and the contestants Bubba, Di Henwood, Karen O'Leary, Mel Bracewell, and Ray O'Leary. So usually I have been going right into taking a closer look at every contestant at the top of each episode, but I realized something that I've been missing out on is talking about everybody's Taskmaster outfits. Um, and another little bit of trivia. I, I, I looked into this, at least as far as the English-speaking Taskmaster shows go. Um, I think this is the first time we have ever had two contestants with the same last name on the same season. We have had Paul and Guy Williams on season one of Taskmaster New Zealand, but of course, Paul is not a contestant. Also, we have had Alan Davis and Greg Davies on Taskmaster series 12, but Greg is the Taskmaster, so that also doesn't count. Also, on Kongen Bethaler, the Norwegian version of Taskmaster, uh, season one had brothers, Bord and Vigard Ilvisoker. If uh, you can think of any other occurrences of two contestants having the same surname on all the other international versions, please let me know. So anyway, let, let's talk about their outfits. I thought it was interesting that none of them have shielded shins. Um, everybody is wearing uh, either shorts or a skirt. And uh, I'm worried that we're going to have some, uh, some tasks that involve having to uh, get their knees all scuffed up. Um, and we already saw a little bit of that in this episode. But anyway, uh, Baba has a pink shirt and shorts. It looks kind of like a tennis outfit, maybe. Um, Dai has a set of lavender sweats. Um, his top is long-sleeved, um, but he's got those lavender, sweet, sweet lavender shorts. Um, Karen is wearing a sort of khaki camping outfit, and she's wearing a little button that has a fun meter on it and it's almost maxed out. It's not completely maxed out, so she could have a little bit more fun. Mel is wearing a sort of uh, cheerleader outfit with the skirts and uh, matching top. And then uh, Ray is wearing a suit, but with short sleeves and shorts, which is uh, very funny. I think maybe he just wears that anyway. I feel like that image of him in the short sleeved suit is uh something that i've seen before it didn't seem unusual so i think my favorite outfit of these the most creative i think i guess is ray's um and maybe karen's with that uh the fun meter is uh pretty fun um uh, they all look very comfortable and probably help a lot with uh, possibly how hot it is because I think these were filmed in the summer. Um, so that would, that would make sense. And I'm now wondering if everybody ever on Taskmaster New Zealand has been wearing shorts. Um, yeah, I guess I could I could look into that real quick. Okay, I have the very relevant information. Uh, in season one, we had th uh, two shorts and three pants. Um, Guy and Brinley had shorts on. Uh, then in season two, we had uh, two shorts and a skirt and uh, two sets of pants. So uh, Guy and David had shorts and Laura had a skirt it might have been skort a skort um and then we reached critical mass in season 3 um Chris Josh Kura and Paul 
all had shorts and Justine had a long skirt. So it has been established that you got to wear shorts on Taskmaster New Zealand. We have to see those calves. Let them breathe. Okay, so let's get into talking about this actual episode. We had the prize task, greatest orange thing. I thought I would bring in the great pumpkin from Peanuts because it's orange because it's a pumpkin and it's great. It's right in its name. But the the biggest question is, does it actually exist? And I think so. I believe along with Linus. Um, Bubba brought in an orange and she made uh, an argument that uh, a long time ago there wasn't any color because it was too hot and an orange uh, was orange just by being itself or something like that. It was a little bit of a ridiculous argument, but it was very entertaining. And the callback to uh, color not existing when it's too hot uh, throughout the episode was a lot of fun, and I hope they keep referencing it throughout the entire season um, because I've decided that uh, the, the, the graphics for these episodes are not going to have color just to go along with that. Um, Dai brought in his German coffee maker because it helps him get started every day. Karen bought, brought in a model of the Ohakune carrot, uh, which is a, uh, a New Zealand landmark. It's a gigantic carrot structure statue. And uh, I thought that, oh, maybe this model is like kind of big. But it turns out it is a very small model of this gigantic carrot. Mel brought in a cake that was flavored orange. It was shaped like an orange and also featured a little fondant figure uh, who was meant to be Jeremy Wells sitting on top. Then we had Ray, who regretted that this is the first prize task, uh, because he starts to undress uh, to reveal that he's gotten a ridiculous orange, deep orange spray tan. And uh, so the prize ends up being that uh, as long as he's orange, that he can he is belongs to whoever wins the episode. Uh, so my scores, um, I gave five points to Mel, four to Bubba, three to Ray, two to Die, and one to Karen. Um, I was pretty close, but I I feel like Jeremy uh, often just gives the last presented thing. As long as it's not terrible, um, that he just gives that the the top marks. But um, he gives Ray the full five, Bubba four. Uh, three to Mel. So you had Mel and Ray flipped from what I thought should have been. Um, two to Die and one to Karen. All right. So film task number one. Um, outside the caravan, there is a bunch of cricket stuff. The task is knock the bales off the wicket from the furthest distance. Furthest distance wins. You have 20 minutes or until the bales fall off. So first die, it goes for the pure brute force, pure skill, pure athleticism um, of just throwing the cricket ball at the wickets. He eventually gets a distance of 17.65 meters, um, but a cricket pitch is 20 meters. So it's not that impressive. Um, Karen, Mel, and Ray... Um, go for uh, using a rope to tie it to the, the wicket and then get as far as they can and then pull it to knock the bales off. Karen gets 61 meters. Mel gets 58.3 meters. Very close. It seemed like Karen was a lot further than, uh, than Mel was, but I think she just went in a different direction so she ended up like amidst the trees amongst the trees amidst on the pathway where the rose task took place in taskmaster australia that's all i can think about when i see that specific location now 
But then Ray, he is not good at tying knots and the ropes that he ties together come undone as he tries to unravel them. So then he tries to throw. He's very bad at that. He does hit the wicket at one point, but it's not hit hard enough to knock the, the bales off of it. And uh, right at the last second, last resort is just to yank on the carpets that's laid out leading up to the to the wickets. Then we see Bubba, who says, I, I'm going to take a practice throw, all right? And Paul says, okay. And it, it and then she she takes one throw, hits it, and the, uh, then Paul starts measuring her away. And then she's like, wait, 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 hold on. That was a practice throw. And in in the studio, she recounts the events. Of, I said I was going to have a practice throw, and you said okay. And then Paul says, I dispute that. We just saw video evidence of that exact uh, a trade of words happening. That's exactly what she said and exactly what he said was okay. So I take great issue with this. I'm totally on Bubba's side here. So Bubba was basically standing at the end of the carpets. She got a distance of 6.05 meters. Ray had a distance of 6.31. So Karen got five points. Mel got four. Di got three. Ray got two. And Bubba got one point. On to film task number two. Uh, in the lab, there's a blackboard with a sheet over it. Just for a moment, we see what's written under the sheet um, during the little transition segment. Uh, projected on the sheet is the number 500, 500. Uh, the task is do the most unpredictable thing at the end of the 500 seconds timer. Most unpredictable thing wins. First, we see Dai, who unleashes a whole bunch of dried goods, like pasta, cornflakes, maybe some other stuff, um, out of the bottom of his shorts. It's very, it was very strange. <laughs> Definitely unexpected. Um, Bubba tackles Paul through the plastic sheets there in the lab. Um, and I really liked the choice of Paul crawling back through the table. It could have gone to either side of that. There is no reason to do that other than it was very awkward and very funny to watch. Um, Karen kisses Paul on the lips and Ray first blindfolds Paul. And then uh, when the time is up, he splashes him with a bucket of water. We then see the reveal of that list of predictions. The number one item was attack Paul which Paul then considered those three, Bubba, Karen, and Ray, as attacks. And I kind of agree with that, but and I, I lightened up a little bit on my disagreement with that because it didn't actually affect the scores, I don't think. It, it didn't cause disqualifications. Um, I guess maybe just prevented them from being the most unpredictable things. Um, but... I have an issue with there being six predictions. If you have six predictions, then it it's going to... Yeah, you're going to get at least one right. They were attack Paul, take your clothes off, silly dance, loud and aggressive noises, a costume change, and break wind. Like, that covers so many things that uh, of course one of those is going to happen also this is where the episode title comes in in defending her attack bubba claims that it was a love bomb and that's her love language anyway then we see mel who becomes a cat she's crawling around uh she goes to push over the plinth and like it gives that look of like eh eh why don't we do that and then doesn't push it over. <laughs> that was my favorite part of it. Uh, and she drinks some milk out of a saucer that's on the ground. But all of this is way before the end of the 500 seconds. And she's like, I swear, if it says after the 500 seconds, 
And of course it does. She is devastated. She runs out of the room, panics, and comes back in with a garbage can and then just dumps it on herself. It gets the full five points because it do- It is very unpredictable. Jeremy says, I, I never thought you would stoop so low to that. And uh, yeah, it was great. Going from like by absolutely failing. <laughs> I don't think she would have gotten the points if she did the cat thing as as the 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 qualifying event. I think because it failed, ended up with the trash that got the five points. It was so good. Um, four points goes to die. I agree with that. Uh, three points goes to Bubba, two to Karen, one to Ray. Uh, you know what? If we're we're talking about it being predicted, Bubba's was an actual attack. Like they both could have gotten very hurt during that. Karen's not an attack really, and Ray's only kind of attack. It was just uh, it was more of a prank, I think. What's the line between a prank and an attack? I think if uh if you need like band aids or to ice. Uh, part of your body then you've been then you've been attacked probably um so i would have flipped those last three rounds um if we were going by the predictions but again unfair having six predictions on the board come on all right film task number three we have paul sitting in the caravan and the contestants going and join him the task is be british most british wins you have 30 minutes uh first we see mel become king melanie uh she's wearing a a robe a crown and holding a scepter she steals a painting of jeremy like it's a weird bird version of jeremy i i don't understand it from the lounge and she puts it into the lab museum uh she then colonizes the caravan i think it's called melville melville uh, the bathtub, maybe that's Meltopia. Maybe I have those flipped. And the lake, which she calls Britain 2.0. Uh, then we see Bubba, who becomes a Love Island contestant, who is in love with and jealous of Paul because uh, she saw him talking to another girl. Uh, is very good, and <laughs> it's very funny that this is uh, the most that uh, Bubba is familiar with uh, with British culture. <laughs> Then we saw Karen, who uh, w- had two roles, as did Paul. Uh, she was playing football with Paul down on the field, uh, but then up on the balcony, as if in the stands for the, the football game, uh, she and Paul were up there. Uh, she was like a surly British man uh, with that little mustache and just yelling at the players yelling at her fellow fans and then she gives paul a liverpool kiss which is a head headbutt so that's now two attacks and one kiss one kiss to go but first we saw die who uh created a whole british scene around the bathtub with uh all kinds of flags all and everything there is a lion there was a crown with some pearls um and then uh to to top it all off he formed a queue behind paul before he then headed back to new zealand um then finally we see ray uh reenacts or uh recreates or creates a wholly original character called sherry mobbins or perry moppins a flying british nanny who has come to take care of a very naughty boy paul williams and uh she attempts to do so by pouring a massive amount of sugar into his mouth that was a lot that was a lot of sugar i really hope he didn't swallow like any of that um at the end of it he kisses paul on the cheek and flies away um it it was very fun and uh his his sherry moppins his uh perry moppins perry sherry moppins um outfit was really good on top of his suit 
uh it it worked great um so my scores i have five points to die four to ray three to karen two to mel and one to bubba but jeremy really liked bubba's and ray's and gave both of them five points gave karen three points and two points each to die and mel that brings us to the live tasks. Correctly don your scrubs, gloves, mask, stethoscope, hairnet, and shoe covers while keeping your balloon aloft. If the balloon touches the ground, you must remove everything and start again. Fastest to dress wins. So right away, Ray runs out into the audience and gives his balloon to them, uh, asks them to help keep it afloat while he does his thing. Uh, despite that, Mel is able to do it faster, um, keeping her own balloon up by herself. So Mel finishes first, gets five points. Ray soon after that, four points. Three points goes to Die, two points to Karen, and then one point to Bubba. Uh, Dai helps keep her balloon up there at the end while she finishes putting on the shoe covers to complete the task. I thought that was really cool. It reminded me a little bit, uh, there's a live task where they end up helping uh, Paul Sinha um, to uh, finish a task, which was really, really nice to see in that season as well. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of other casts where that would not have happened. There would have been all kinds of... Uh, sabotage possibly popping of balloons i'm thinking specifically of taskmaster series 15 um with those first couple of live tasks the, the things were intense um so this is like completely different from that it was it, yeah it was really nice uh so the f scores for the first episode of season four uh we had Karen with 13 points, Dai with 14, Bubba also with 14, Ray with 17 points, and the winner who took home all of the great orange things was Mel with 19 points. I think Mel is going to win this whole thing. So, I mean, the scores are really close in this first episode. Everybody broke everybody's in double digits um she was only two points ahead of second place first to last place is only six points so it's not like she's coming out of the gate just obliterating everyone um everybody is is doing pretty well here off the bat so i am very very excited to see how this whole season plays out and, um, yeah, I think my favorite moment, I already mentioned this, but that little look over to Paul before she pushed over the plinth and then didn't push it over. Um, I just keep thinking about that. It's just so perfect. It's like, I can imagine a cat doing that and it, it just makes me <laughs> laugh thinking about it. I also really liked how much Mel was laughing in the studio. Um, and I think it, it spread more and more to the others throughout the episode. But like at the beginning, she was having a really great time. And I like that a lot. And I also really like anytime Dai is talking about stuff because he he seems like he's having a great time too so that about wraps it up here for episode one let me know what your favorite moments from this episode were um who do you think is going to win who do you think will be in last place i think that's hard to predict as well like everybody is in the mix on both sides of it i could i could see this being a season that has like one of the narrowest uh spreads between first and last place i think that would be really cool too be sure to follow over on instagram and some other places tiw podcast go to tiwpodcast.com for more episodes subscribe on itunes spotify amazon music any other podcatcher of choice just use that rss feed also big shout outs once again to taskmaster down under podcast Go and listen to all the episodes about Taskmaster Australia Season 1, including 
the episode that I was a guest on. I forget which episode that was, but anyway, yeah. You can find it at TMDU Podcast over on Twitter and Instagram. And I'll see you next time here on Taskmaster is Wonderful. Bye.